Hi, Justyna and Kuba. We are a couple from Poland who travels around Europe in search of traces of our prehistory and inspiring places. And everything we find, we share with you in our videos. Today we are in our country, in Poland, exactly in Warsaw, because we want to tell you about lost kingdom covered by desert. But hmm, in Poland there is no, no desert. Moment, there is one desert, Błędowska desert. But hmm, it, it's overgrown with bushes. No. Today. <laughs> Today. <laughs> Maybe in future. <laughs> Maybe in future, but... Mm -hmm. Here is a good place to tell you about unique uh, discovery from Sudan, from Faras in Sudan. Yes, we know that Sudan is in Africa, but uh, next to Egypt and uh, Sudan, here is one of the best places to tell about Christian paintings from ancient, legendary, lost kingdom Nubia. in Africa. Behind us is the National Museum in Warsaw. Here in Faras Gallery, beside the gallery in National Museum of Sudan in Khartoum, is the biggest in the world collection of Nubian Christian paintings, Nubian Christian wall paintings. Mm -hmm. They come from a cathedral in Pakoras, in ancient Pakoras, and uh, this cathedral was erected in 8th century AD. Ancient Nubia was located in northeastern Africa and covered the middle course of the Nile between Aswan and Khartoum, currently in southern Egypt and northern Sudan. This ancient culture is mentioned in the Old Testament in the book of Genesis, chapter 10, verses 6 to 7. At that time, during the new kingdom in Egypt, it was known as Cush, and that's how it is named in the Old Testament. Homo sapiens has been living in the territory which later became Nubia for at least 150,000 years. Another species of human, Homo erectus, lived there before him. 12,000 to 4,000 years old rock paintings have been discovered in the desert surrounding and covering ancient Nubia. Rock paintings indicate that cattle have been bred there for several thousand years. Where there is now a desert with temperatures reaching 50 degrees Celsius, there lived lions, elephants and giraffes. Researchers indicate that there was a savanna several thousand years ago. The name Nubia began to be used in the Roman period. This country was called Kush in the Bible. The ancient Egyptians called it Taseti, that means land of the bow, because the Kushites were masters of using the bow. Despite this, the ancient Egyptians invaded the country in search of gold and slaves. Wars were breaking out. As a result of one of them, the rulers of Kush ruled defeated Egypt as pharaohs of the 25th dynasty. In the 6th century, the rulers of the now three Nubian kingdoms were converted to Christianity. But it is possible that Christianity may have reached the Nubian countries earlier via the Egyptian hermits. From the 6th century, Christianity became the official religion of the Nubian kingdoms for more than 700 years. In Faras, which was then called Pakoras, from the 7th century, a bishop presided. The earliest cathedral in the town was built for him. In the 7th century, Arabs conquered Egypt and the new Muslim rulers repeatedly attempted to conquer Nubia. Followers of Islam ultimately began to rule in Nubia in the 14th century. 
The churches were abandoned. The desert took them under its control, filling and covering them with sand. Life went on until the present day. For our story, important is the year 1959. In that year, Egyptian government decided to build a high dome in Aswan to regulate the Nile. The historic monuments of northern Nubia and of ancient Egypt were supposed to disappear under the accumulated waters of the Nile forever. So UNESCO appealed to the international community of archaeologists to save the heritage of Nubia and Egypt. A team from Poland was one of the scientific expeditions who answered the asking. Polish team, directed by Professor Kazimierz Michałowski, decided to examine the small city of Faras in Sudan, located several kilometers to the south from the Egyptian border. The Polish government gave considerable funds for archaeological work in Faras. So the Sudanese government offered in exchange part of the monuments that will be dug up. Faras had already been researched before. It was in the beginning of 20th century, so it was known that there was a major urban center in the times of Pharaonic Egypt, seat of an Egyptian governor, and it had richly equipped cemeteries. In 1961, Polish archaeologists, directed by Professor Michałowski, started their work in Faras, on the edge of the desert. The site promised interesting discoveries from the pharaonic Egypt. Here and there were scattering big stones with Egyptian hieroglyphs on them. And between them, a large mount immediately caught attention. Professor Michałowski expected that there was a temple of Tatmosis III inside the mount. Researchers started uncovering the building from under the desert sand. A structure began to emerge from within the hill. Its shape was strange for an Egyptian temple. The first wall paintings appeared. There were Virgin Mary and child, angels and saints with nymphs around their heads. Archaeologists excavated a Christian temple, moreover filled with unique paintings. They were located on all of the walls of the building. Many interesting elements of architectural decoration were also preserved in the cathedral. About 200 inscriptions in Greek, Coptic and Nubian were found on the walls. Tombs of local bishops were found around the sanctuary, with a list of bishops containing their names and years in office. It was cathedral of historical Pacorus erected in 707. Interestingly, This cathedral stood on the foundations of an earlier, older cathedral. The foundation stele for this newer cathedral indicated the year 707. The discovery became a world sensation. All important newspapers in Europe and the United States wrote about it. Polish scientists had permission to work in an area much larger than the cathedral and its closest surrounding. But the discovery was so important and protection of everything required so much work that they focused on it. The water of the Nile was seen to rise a little every day. It was known that three years after the discovery, the waters of the Nile would flood the area. The paintings had to be safeguarded as quickly as possible. They had to be cut off from the walls, placed on horizontal basements and taken from the cathedral, which was supposed to disappear underwater. If one of the paintings fell from the wall, only dust would remain. The paintings were done by the tempera paints on dry mud plaster. Because the cathedral existed for a long time, Paintings inside were created and repainted from the 18th to the 14th century AD. As a result, there were three layers of paintings that had to be separated. Nothing could be left and time was short. The Sudanese government sent an artist who copied all the paintings on a one-to-one scale. 
Polish specialists, although not accustomed to so high temperatures, worked almost around the clock. The paintings were protected by a mixture of wax and resin, which were hot pressed through Japanese tissue paper and goes into the surface of all paintings. Then they were cut off the walls with saws directly onto a stiff base. Everything went well and not a single painting fell off the wall. The paintings were taken to a safe place. Their conservation took several years. Specialists from Poland and Sudan done it perfectly. Of course, they were divided according to the agreement. Professor Michałowski immediately suggested that the largest and most impressive ones go to the museum in Khartoum. The rest was divided. For the National Museum in Warsaw, Sudan proposed the ones you are looking at. A model of the cathedral was also prepared for the first exhibition at the National Museum in Warsaw. This model is still in the Faras Gallery in this museum. It is made perfectly. The cathedral was a three-nave building with a transverse nave. There were chapels on the sides of the naves. In one of the corners there were remains of staircase leading to a gallery on the first floor. The cathedral had an antechamber, so-called narthex. Main nave had a semicircular apse with a tiered platform. Moreover, one of the chapels had baptismal font, so it was baptistery. The cathedral was a large construction for its time. Under it were the foundation of earlier, also large building. It was a church on a basilica plan. This one with paintings, later one is basilica as well. That church underneath could have had interior paintings too. Researchers found one small painting and there could have been more of them. In the past, before the second cathedral was built. The cathedral from the 7th century had reliefs which embellishing semicircular walls of apse. More than 150 paintings were found on the walls, but 120 were detached. The worst preserved stayed in the cathedral because there wasn't enough time to save them all. These paintings were in antechamber or nothex of cathedral, now in Faras Gallery in National Museum in Warsaw. The main depiction here is Virgin Mary Eluza. This painting was in small recess. On both sides of her you can see Archangel Gabriel with a sword and Archangel Michael with a trumpet. Both arch archangels wear robes like Byzantine emperor and hold sphere, the symbol of imperial reign over the world. Virgin Mary holds infant Jesus. She stands against starry night sky. She wears beautiful, rich robe decorated with pearls and gemstones. You can see a crown on her head, which is characteristic to many Nubian depictions. Such crown is almost absent in Eastern painting from Syria to Byzantium. It is seen on depictions from, for example, France or Italy from that time. Virgin Mary holds a handkerchief in her hand, which is part of the clothing of high-born women in Byzantium. This painting from the cathedral is most famous in the world, Saint Anne. It is a fragment of bigger composition. Saint Anne is mother of Virgin Mary. She is known from the Apocrypha. This depiction of Saint Anne is unique. Her gesture immediately draws attention. Anna puts her finger to her lips. Silence. Mystery. This symbolic gesture caught the attention of the discoverers. As if symbolically, it indicates the fate of the cathedral and its finding. Very impressive painting, in the form in which it has remained. Raw form, huge eyes, and this gesture. This image catches attention. The painting in the apse. In the beginning, it showed Virgin Mary and twelve apostles standing on the two sides of her. 
Now here is the third version of Virgin Mary. The oldest depiction presented Virgin Mary seated on a throne with infant Christ on her lap. Second one was similar. The last version, this one you're looking at, Virgin Mary stands behind the king whose portrait is painted in the center. The king is dressed in the robes of a high dignitary of the Byzantine court. Virgin Mary standing behind him with infant Jesus holds her hands on king's shoulders. The mother of God presents her chosen one to people in the church and shows her protection to him. On both sides of the king, other Nubian rulers added their portraits. All the paintings are extremely interesting. When you are in Warsaw, don't forget to go to the National Museum and see them. One more caught my particular attention. Christ enthroned with an interestingly presented robe. It is completely covered with ice. Finally, once again St. Anne, probably the most famous image from the cathedral today. An inscription forming a frame says that this is Anne, mother of Theotokos, Holy Ma. The inscription stops here, broken. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe not to not miss the next content. And till the next time. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>